What's up everybody? It's me, Drew, back at it again, making another video. This time I'm talking about my Patagonia collection and slight obsession. So I'm sitting right now in my backyard, beautiful BC. Um, I have a view of the chief from my yard. You know, there's probably some climbers gonna watch this video because uh, Patagonia was founded on climbing. Check this out. There it is in all its glory. Anyway, this is just the intro. I wanted to tell you all um, why I like Patagonia and why I'm doing this video. Um, you know, I think they're just a great company. I think they were founded on the right principles. They were founded on function before fashion. You know, Yvonne Chouinard started his brand making climbing gear, making um, hard goods as Chouinard equipment. And um, I think he sort of stumbled into the clothing game. He wanted to make clothing that was good for climbing because there wasn't much out there that would stand the test of time for the wear and tear of climbing. Um, so yeah, function before fashion. So much of the amazing things that we wear today or designs and styles that we take for granted came out of um, true function. They served a purpose, either workwear or military or something like that, in this case, climbing. But also just their environmental initiatives, you know, it's, it's still a privately held company by the Chouinards, they never went public. They kept full control. Um, you know, recently they donated 10 million, you know, they took the Trump tax cut that they received and just gave, gave it back to the planet. How can you not support that? It's just amazing. You know, I read the book Yvonne wrote, Let My People Go Surfing. Um, just his, his vision and his principles and the way he runs his business is amazing. So I'm all about it and I love the clothing. You know, I live an outdoor lifestyle. I live here in Squamish, BC. Um, I'm not a climber, but I'm an avid snowboarder, skateboarder. And now I'm getting into fly fishing. So it really aligns with my life. So, um, That's about it. I'm gonna take you inside and I'm gonna show you my collection. I have some rare Patagonia pieces. Right now I'm wearing my Rhythm hoodie, which I just got. Frank's Vice, shout out Frank's Vice. Thank you very much. Another look at my beautiful stream. Let's get into it. Here it is. All the good Patagonia I own. Hopefully, stream in the background is not too annoying. I'll try to speak loud so you can hear me. I'm gonna run through this uh, in a timeline, essentially, of the stuff that I own, uh, starting with basically my favorite stuff and the oldest stuff and moving along. Um, like I said, uh, Patagonia, before it was Patagonia, was Chouinard equipment, which was hard goods. But at some point in the 70s, I believe, Yvonne, got into the clothing business because he realized there was a huge hole in the market and there wasn't good clothing that would stand the test of time for climbers. So he was climbing in Europe and uh, found these Umbro rugby shirts. You know, super heavy cotton, super nice quality. So I have a grip of these Umbro shirts. This is Umbro brand. This one is Umbro with the Chouinard tag. So this piece is a very important Patagonia piece. This would have been the crossover when he just bought the Umbro shirts, brought them back to America, and put the Chouinard tag in them and started selling them to climbers. Super cool piece. Then we have basically the transition, well this one, the transition of when they basically started making them under the Patagonia name. It's almost the exact same quality, really cool. And then I have a black tag one here. I'll try to show close-ups of some of these tags and things. All right, very cool timeline 
of the Patagonia Rugby. Okay, next up we have Deep Pile Fleece. These things were the first fleeces they ever made, the first style fleeces they ever made. So the actual fleece side is on the inside. As the story goes, these were, um, well, when they found the fabric to make these, it was a random fluke, and the original use for the fabric to make these deep pile fleeces was meant for toilet seat covers. You know those toilet seat covers your grandma has? That's what these were. Anyway, they thought it would be super warm. Ingenious idea. Have this one, a little bit later version, the ribbing, and these pants. Patagonia deep pile pants. Crazy rare, although super hard to actually wear, but they're rare. Uh, nice old white label, sort of sailor shirt. Got this white label knit sweater. Super nice and warm. All right, this is one of my favorite pieces. Not because it's old, not because it's worth a ton of money, but just because it's super functional. This is called the foul weather jacket. This is basically meant for sailing, going through crazy storms. It's like basically um, rain jacket on steroids. All crazy taped up seams, super, super high quality. These come in a bunch of different colors. I've only found the yellow, but there's like a white and pink. There's probably a teal one out there. I have the foul weather pants, in red and white. And I have a different version of the foul weather pants in all white. They even have these cool uh, hand warmer pockets here fleece lined. Pause. Okay, next up. Another cool piece is kayak shirt. It's got the neoprene Velcro on the cuff and on the collar drawstring here keep you nice and dry when you're out on your kayak or sailing around do start doing something on the water and then another different version here this thing's pretty rare I haven't found a lot of these actually I've only ever found this one I thrifted this one uh, somewhere in the States I forget but this is U.S. military issue Patagonia. So I guess Patago oh, the U.S. Army contracts tons of different companies to make, make clothing for them, uh, especially good outerwear companies. You know, they want to be warm and dry when they're out fighting the war. So this is a digital camo U.S. Army issue shirt, jacket. Arcteryx does all the uh, Canadian military stuff, so they have some really dope stuff too. When I originally found this piece, I thought it was fake, but it's not. It's legit. It has some crazy tagging on it. Yeah, like this little tag here looks a bit sus. But anyway, pull over. Reversible. Love this color. Sick. Okay. Pataloha. The Patagonia Hawaiian shirt sub brand. Uh, I believe started in the 80s. I don't have any of the really old ones. There's even some Chouinard um, Hawaiian style shirts that have crampons on them and different climbing gear. Super dope. I really want to get those, but this one I'm a big fan of. It's got the, the flies, fly fishing flies all over it. 
I also got this one that's quite a bit newer, Tropical Fish. And I love this piece. Just a straight up Haynes Beefy T 80s Pataloha. All right. Now on to the stand up short. This one is super OG, uh, I guess late 70s on this. Uh, by the way, I'm not an expert. If I'm miscalling dates, tags, um, I probably am. Don't hate on me. Leave a comment. Anyway, the stand up short. They call it the stand up short because you can literally, it'll stand up on a table so stiff. These ones are pretty broken in, so they won't do it. Anyway, the stand up short. Um, I think they've made this design or a super similar design continual from when they started it in the 70s all the way to today. You can still buy these shorts. Like double, double in the ass uh, reinforcement for the rocks. Um, yeah, super classic Patagonia piece. Okay, moving along to t-shirts. Great Pacific Ironworks, Schwinard equipment. On the High Crew, 100% cotton t-shirt by Stedman. Love this shirt, it's probably one of my favorite shirts. Crazy Japanese wave graphic. Uh, this, I think, is the earliest shirt that I have from Patagonia. On to this one, another Great Pacific Ironwork. This one's much later Haynes beefy tea tag again similar graphic but definitely a later shirt and on to this late 80s probably patty okay again another one of my favorite pieces I have too many favorite pieces I kind of wish this thing fit me this is extra small but um, this piece is dated Spring 91, I think it is. Spring 91. Patagonia fishing vest. Love this thing. The colors are super dope. Um, yeah, rad piece. I have these Gridman pants. You can see close up there, they have the checker pattern grid. It's almost like a ripstop uh, material. Um, these are super popular. If you find the jackets, pants hard to sell, but the jackets, everybody wants. I had a jacket, I had let one go, which I don't really regret. I'll find another one, but uh, all I have the pants to show you on this video. Okay, into some jackets. Anorak. I'm a big fan of the pullover Anoraks. I got a bunch. This one, I'm not sure the date. Oh, this is um, 93, fall 93. I have two of these raincoats, kind of a plain jacket. Those are also, I'm not sure they don't need either. Basically too much information to hold all up in your brain. Can't uh, remember all the dates of the stuff, but anyway, I keep it because I like it. I think nowadays, fast fashion has gotten out of control. People are throwing away clothing like crazy. Um, you know, the big thing about Patagonia is that, you know, hopefully the product lasts. It does last and they have a lifetime warranty. So if it doesn't last, they'll fix it for free or they'll replace it. Um, and that kind of stuff makes a difference. You're not throwing out your gear all the time. You know, a lot of companies now make the gear, so it only lasts one or two years, so you will buy more stuff. They want you to buy more stuff, but Patagonia is all about having you have the stuff forever or recycling it. You can actually go on Patagonia's website and buy other people's used gear that they're done with. Um, so I applaud them for that, and I think you all should think about where you're spending your money and who you're supporting. Just a nice hooded jacket. Not sure the date on that. Another one. That's whatever. 
Another nice hooded jacket. I guess I only picked the hooded jackets. Okay, I got a stack of these. Uh, these are like the super lightweight anoraks. This one is early from the 80s with the snaps. I have two colors in this one, the pink and the blue. I actually wear this one. Um, these are super rad, kind of like a nice lightweight everyday jacket. Then this is like a more recent um, edition of it. I have one, two, three, four, five of these. Black. Yellow, blue, red, double red. Okay, on to some hats. Or fleece balaclava. How about that? This thing will keep you toasty. It's a little warm for today, but uh, you get the idea. Okay. This is spring 87, I believe. Tons of these fleece hats. I got two of these patterned ones. They're all basically the same shape, but they made them for a lot of years. Like this is fall 96. So if you want to know how to date to Patagonia, there is a few different ways. Uh, obviously knowing the different tags, if you're going into the older stuff, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, but also their inside tags, like this one's really clear, so it's easy to read. That has an F96, fall 96. This one has this one has a F5, I believe. Or yeah, F5. So I believe that's fall 95 also. Or yeah, so that's fall 95, fall 96. It's weird that they didn't put like some of them just say F six so you gotta you gotta wonder if it's 86 or 96 um but these are i'm pretty sure these are 90s let's check this one just for good measure this is f97 okay on the fleeces where you find those tags this is oh this is a modern one that's a modern snap tee this is an old one. I mean, the designs are pretty much the same. They've continued to keep it pretty tight. Um, yeah, so this one on the inside tag right here says FA98. So check those inside tags. A lot of them are worn out. You can't tell. Um, but it does give you uh, quite a bit of info into the date. Spring 2000. So I got a bunch of these style hats. I love these things. All different crazy prints. Let's see what's dated on this guy. This is uh, spring 95. This one's almost like a cotton twill sort of fabric. Got my fly fishing hat right here, the trout hat. Okay. Time for what Patagonia is known for, fleece. I got a big old stack of fleece. Um, I probably have more than this. My kids have Patagonia fleeces, my wife has Patagonia fleeces, but this is some of the stuff that I've kept. Uh, rare colorways, more interesting stuff, so yeah. Number one favorite fleece is the Rhythm hoodie. Has this Rhythm logo right here on the sleeve, has these like reinforcements. There actually isn't a Patagonia logo on this, which I think is part of uh, its allure. It's kind of cool. They don't really ever do that on a lot of things. Has like this extra 
uh, material down here. Reverse deep pile. This is from 01. These are hard to find, uh, especially in black. They come in black, oatmeal. Uh, I think there's a blue. Um, but anyway, and it, the main thing is the hood. You just don't see many Patagonias with hoods, especially older ones. They, they've put some out in recent years, but nothing old and definitely not deep pile. Okay. Um, these are a nice stack of crazy colors that I've acquired. This violet purple. You know, at some point in the 80s, they decided they were going to go out and make crazy different tones of uh, fleeces, start to spice it up in their line. I guess before that, they were making pretty neutral color things throughout the 70s. Um, but yeah, they definitely did, did go wild. Purple and pink. This thing is like burn your retina bright. Purple and, green, and floral green. Wild colors. I love these things. I'm looking for more colors. Also, if you have Patagonia you want to sell, uh, cool, interesting, old stuff, hit me up. Um, you can DM me on Instagram. I'll put the name right here, Drew Heifetz. Uh, I'm always buying. Or even I just want to see cool stuff, so hit me up. Uh, pink fleece line jacket. I like these. These came in a mint of colors too. Same jacket in the red and blue. Let's see if this has a date. This is fall 97. Fall 97. Fleece line vest. Don't think there's a date on this one. This is a crazy strange piece. Hooded parka. Or actually not parka, this is a poncho. Sorry, poncho. This one does have a date. I think it's pretty recent. It's like, this is only like three years old. But uh, I don't think they made a lot of these anyway. Pretty cool piece. Um, this is one that I wear snowboarding. It's got the National Ski Patrol tag. So it was made for them. Super, super warm. Um, yeah, not super old, but... Retro X. Pretty sure these are called Retro X. Um, the oatmeal colorway of this fleece goes for a lot. I've had it, but I don't have it right now. I do wear this gray and red one. I love it. The deep piles are the best. Look at that. Look at that. It's crazy how popular Patagonia is now. Like, I mean, it's always been popular in the vintage circles. Japan has always wanted it. Um, true vintage heads have always been into it but in the last like two three years it's blown up in mainstream America where you know fa fa young fashion girls want to wear Patagonia it's like being sold in Urban Outfitters um, it's insane you know and I think the fleece trend in general is super blowing up um, and basically it all traces back to Patagonia L.L. Bean, companies like that, but mainly Patagonia. Um, for me, I've always liked this stuff. And like I said before, it aligns with my lifestyle. I'm super into it. Um, I appreciate the company. I want to like, I want my company, Frankie Collective and F is in Frank, to take some of those values um, and apply them to our business. You know, I think we all need to be better to the planet, even though you know there is no true way uh, to fully have no impact when you're making clothing on the planet I mean buying vintage is one thing because if you buy vintage you're taking you know you're creating um, less demand for new clothing which is the first step um, but also supporting brands that really have less impact on the planet like Patagonia I think is the way so hope you like this video Hope you like the stash. It's always growing. I'll do more videos. If you want to see me do a video on anything else, I collect tons of different stuff. Hit me up, leave comments, let me know what you think. If you have Patagonia, I want to see it. Hit me in the DMs on Instagram. 
and that's it. <laughs>